Hello, this is Mike with Trade Wings RV Center here to congratulate you on your 2024 Coachman Legacy Edition 293 TQ BS Travel Trailer. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things to get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A few things to take into consideration when you're parking this. On your campsite, leave plenty of room for your awning. And on your off campsite, besides your slide, I also want you to think about where your power and water connections are going to be. Your power plug is going to plug in way back here in the rear, and then your water connection right next to it. So park accordingly so you can utilize the facilities at the campsite. Once we arrive to unhook our hitch, we'll have our unit. Unhooking that hitch is going to include using this BAL system. Simply flip that up, turn this on. Quick reference guide in case you forget what I tell you here. You don't have the video handy. All right, so we've got an auto mode. Let me try to get this where you can see it. We've got an auto mode, a manual mode, tongue jack mode. Of course, we're going to go to tongue jack mode. Extend to raise, retract to lower. That'll get your uh, vehicle up out of the way. Once your tow vehicle's out of the way, we can go to manual mode, extend our stabilizing jacks, which are right down there, or we can go back to home screen and go to auto mode, make sure everything is clear of the unit, uh, got your jack pads down about where you normally set them, and go ahead and hit auto level. Make sure everything's clear, Okay, auto leveling in process. What's going to happen is your front and rear auto leveling jacks are going to run down. Here's your back ones. These are going to run uh, down in the front, and then of course you see they go up, going down the back, and they're going to get this thing level and stable. Once it is level and stable, we'll hook up our power and water. See the other side of these coming down as they continue. Now hooking these power cords up, it's kind of like a pistol grip here. Put it in at say 11 o'clock, turn it to noon, put your washer on, you're all set. Now, should you need to plug into a 110 in your convenience pack, will be a 30 to 15 amp reducer. All right, we've got your power hooked up. Let's hook up your water. At campsites, we're gonna hook up to a city water connection. First and foremost, a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. Always use this when putting water into your unit because you don't know what the water pressure is at different campsites. So hook that up, hook up your hose. Don't turn your hose on yet. Let's find your hot water heater. Here's is located over here on the campsite. And all we are doing now is make sure our drain plugs back in there. Uh, plumber's tape, not putty. Putty will gum up on you, but plumber's tape around that, get that in there nice and snug, and then you can turn that hose on. Now, if that hose has been on for a few minutes, we're going to go inside, open up our slides so that we can get inside to our bathrooms. Open up our showers, our sinks, the same thing in the kitchen. Open up those water lines, get a nice steady flow of water going through them, and then you can shut them off. And you're all set to camp. Now, let's say we're going to go camp, and then we're not going to use city water. We're going to dry camping. In that case, we'll fill up our fresh water tank over here. Now, no need for a water pressure regulator here. Simply gravity fill this with a hose. Two ways to tell it's full. One, there's an overflow valve right there. Or two, on the inside, where you check the levels of your black and gray tanks, there's also a fresh water button. Don't leave this unattended while you're filling it. Um, once it's full, put that cap back on. Remove the hose, put that cap back on. Now, whenever you want to utilize this water, you'll turn on your water pump indoors. Don't turn on your water pump and hook the city water. That's already pressurized. 
All right, we're all set to camp of power and water. We'll go ahead and walk you around the rest of the outside unit, continue here in this back corner here. So we got fresh water, city water, power, an outdoor shower. Which if I have the right key. There we go. Outdoor shower does have a handle, so you can actually take a shower. Low point drain, right there, those two, and then that's your freshwater tank drain. Stabilizing jacks down. Uh, quick little thing on your slides. Get some slide lubricant. That will add to the longevity of the life of these. You want these to stay nice and flexible and pliable. Coming around the rear of the unit, you got a nice Storage rack, cotter pins hold them in. Prep for the Lippert uh, ladder. Prep for a backup camera. Coming around on this side, we got a nice outdoor kitchen. That quick connect hose will connect on the back of this and then to right there. Nice griddle. Got a lock out here. And lock back in. Electric fridge. Storage. Another thing, make sure that you have this. These are held up by magnets. Make sure that you have these secure and locked for travel. Leash link, if you want to put your pet out here, it's a nice spot to tie it on. Flue for your furnace, a couple things on that. One, make sure it's never blocked. Two, if you are running your furnace, steer clear that it does get hot. Again, our hot water heater. A, uh, vent for your hood range a couple of outdoor speakers a tuck away um handrail i'll show you how to use that here shortly your black tank flush we'll use that when we dump our black tank cable and 110 in case you want to set a tv out here your big pass-through storage area there's your go power solar controller whole purpose of this is to keep your uh, solar panels from overcharging your batteries your whole purpose make sure that it stays on your flooded battery or whatever type of battery you uh, may put on this I'll send you a separate video from go power on that Up front your propane does come with a cover lefty loosey to open Point this toward the tank you wish to be using uh, Battery disconnect this will disconnect all the battery power to the unit that will come important when I talk about your carbon monoxide propane detector. Back over on this side, we have our sewage. Which we have a couple tanks. We've got a black and gray tank and then an extra gray galley tank down there. That about covers everything out here. Let's go check out the inside. Coming up inside the unit, first thing I always like to point out is your fire extinguisher. Make sure that you and everyone that's camping with you knows the fire extinguisher is located by the entry doorway in case of an emergency. All the way to your left as you come in is your control panel. So I'll get close so it'll stop flashing on you. Uh, if you can read it now. So we've got, let's see if I can, fresh, black, and two gray tanks. Freshwater buttons, one I said to keep an eye on when you're filling your fresh water. Um, here's battery. This little battery box I've got on it right now. Connection, Bluetooth connection. That's where you connect there at. Interior and exterior lighting for your awning. Your water pump to get to your fresh water. Your hot water heater hooked to gas. Your hot water heater hooked to electric. It does make a difference. Choose correctly slide and awning control on your awning not enough room to run this all the way out i just want to tell you when you do run it all the way out just run it out until a flap falls down and you can see the bar if you hold that down it's going to continue running itself out and start to flip up backwards and run itself up backwards onto itself so keep an eye on it when you run it out make sure you don't run it out any further than you need to Put that in, I would tell you the slam locks work best when gently slammed. Alright, coming into the unit. 
Off to the left, we're going to head into the kitchen with a self-explanatory microwave, a fan, and a light above our cooktop. Wind gas up, turn that to high, hit your spark, that's how you hit, that's how you light these. High, spark, light. All the way down here is your oven, same thing, turn that to high, to your flame, hit your spark, and if you keep your panel light, your oven light off, you'll be able to see the reflection of the flame on your metal there and tell whether or not it lit. Then turn it to your desired temperature. This is a battery disconnect for your fridge. So your fridge is on now. Say you want to defrost your fridge and leave all the rest of your power on. Just shut your fridge off. Safety latch. Going down the road, put that on. It's going to keep this from opening up on you. Real quick run through on the furnace. You've got fan, you've got AC, and furnace. That's pretty much it. Say if you get to the AC over here, turn on, turn down your temperature, and your heat over here is where you turn it up. Actually, it's 89 as high as it goes. And then here you can turn the fan on and off. Circling around, you got 110 down there in the corner. Just sitting here at the table on the charger device. Wiggle this tabletop up, remove those metal legs, put the tabletop on this wooden ledge, put your flat cushions on top, gives you another sleeping quarters. Or you can come over here, remove your Velcro backs, lift up here in the middle, pull it toward you. Another area to sleep there. Now we turn your cushions. Put your back to a sofa. Entertainment center here. Here's your backer for a TV. Here's your antenna. Make sure you push that, have that red light on when you run your digital channel scan for your local channels. JBL sound system here. Indoor and outdoor speakers. Uh, fireplace, my battery that needs to be plugged in. Um, if you're at a campsite, don't waste your gas. If it's chilly in here in the morning or evening, crank this up. It'll get it toasty in here in no time. Up at the ceiling here is going to be my smoke alarm. Coming back to my queen bunk area. Lights and charging ports, charging ports, and one touch lighting here. But yeah, big queen beds here. The door closed for travel. Let's check out your bathroom. Come into your bathroom. I'm going you got a hand crank open, exhaust vent here, a shower door that you want left um, snapped closed for travel, just as it is now. Make sure you close this up, put that on there when you're taking off down the road. You don't want these bouncing around. 110 with GFCI reset. Down here we got some plumbing to maintain. If you travel a lot in this and you're bouncing it up and down the road a lot, check your plumbing in your bathroom and your kitchen. Make sure nothing's wiggled loose over time. Some storage underneath your bed. Charging port 110 on each side. Backer over here for your TV, 110 charging port or cable there. Now, this lighting is one touch, and about covers everything. Act like we're leaving the campsite. 
Let's slide your bedroom, so just shut off all of your lights. Come through. Secure doors. Secure door. Secure door. Another secure door. So I like to say doors and drawers. Walk through the unit. Just make sure all doors and drawers are closed. This is a safety strap for your sofa. Just snap that in. So keep that from moving around during travel. Now come to my main. You shut off my interior lights. Then I can see any individual lighting I need to walk through the unit and shut off. What a nice dark unit as it's traveling down the road. Not wasting battery power. I know I shut these off. Bedroom looks good. Bathroom light needs off. Secure. Nothing's gonna stop our slide from coming in. Come back, just turn on our interior lights to so see what we're doing, and hit slide in. Always the bottom's gonna come in first. Plugged in, it's gonna come in a little faster. I'm running off a, a weak battery box at the moment. Just a run in. See the importance of having that door over there secure. I didn't mention the app, but get the app, one control. That will uh, allow you to stand outside and open up the slide, watch it, and shut off your lights from outside, etc. Slides in, shut off my lights, and exit the unit. I do want to mention, we'll just pull up on this, slide it forward, pull this cotter pin out, Push it back through with this closed or down. Now steps ready for travel or our handle. Steps are adjustable. We've got a little button here to push in that'll allow that to slide up and down. Make sure your steering door is all the way open. Set that in there. Before you leave the dump station, we're gonna lock and deadbolt this door. Meantime, leave it open. All right, whether we're dry camping or boondocking, we're going to have to bring up our stabilizing jacks. So we're going to come back to our BAL system. Turn it on. Go back to auto mode. And we're going to put go back to the auto leveling. Excuse me, we're going to go back to home screen. Auto reconnect. Hit stop. We're going to go to auto mode. Auto reconnect. Okay. So what that's going to do is that's going to bring up my stabilizing jacks. Front and rear. And if we're out dry camping, we're going to come back here, dump our freshwater drain right there, and head on home or to the nearest dump station, whatever we're in need of. If we're at a campsite, we're going to unhook our power, our water, our cable, bring up our stabilizing jacks, and head on up to the dump station. Now at the dump station, park accordingly. we got two dumps. First one you're going to start with is the farthest one front to the front of your tires on your driver's side of your tow vehicle. 10 foot hose comes your convenience pack. Hook that up and pull the sewer outlet connection which is your big black handle there. And that sounds like it's no longer draining. Come back over, bring your steps down, go up inside your unit, check the level of your black tank. Show's empty or just about. Leave your steps down, come back out here. Grab the hose at the dump station, hook it up to this tank flush, and again, 
with your black handle still pulled open, turn that tank flush on and let that run for a good five minutes. That's going to wash all that nastiness out of your black tank. When that's done, close that up, remove that hose, make sure all that washout that you just put in there has drained. This is still bringing up stabilizing jacks and leveling out the front. Come back over here. When that's empty, close your black and pull this gray tank. That's going to be clean and wise, your sinks and the showers. That's going to clean your sewage hose out for you. When that's done, close that up. Come back over here. Hook up to this galley tank. Hook your hose up and pull that. Now while that last gray is draining, I'll come back here and dump my low point drains. If I'm done camping for the season, and I don't want to leave hot water in my hot water heater, I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to lift up on this pressure release valve. Now be careful, some hot water is going to come out of there. When that's done, push that back down. Then you can pull your drain plug and get the rest of that residual water out of there. I love these new doors. Those close so much easier. And there's two class on them. All right. When our last gray is done. Checking levels on the inside after each one. We're going to close that up. Grab the sewage hose. And conveniently and sanitarily store it right here in our bumper. And head on home. Again. Hope you guys enjoy this legacy for many years to come. Happy camping!